Hi there, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical counselor and mental health therapist and counseling psychologist. And depending on where you are in the world, those all mean the same thing. And today we're gonna to talk uh, about part two of loving someone who has depression and how we can be there to support them in effective ways. So last time we talked about uh, a few things that we could do and a few things that we sometimes may do that are not really helpful and then uh, looked at some better ways that we can approach our loved ones. And this is part two. We're gonna talk more about different things that we can do to love, to support our loved ones and things that maybe not be quite as helpful, not quite as useful. So I think one of the most important ones, I'm gonna reiterate it, I said it in the last one, but it's about things that we say to someone who has depression um, that we think are helpful, but that are actually really not helpful at all and oftentimes make the person feel worse. But it comes from a good place. We're coming from a good place, so we have good intentions. And those are when we say things like, you know, just get over it, the grass is always greener, um, look on the bright side, somebody always has it worse, if you just get out and do something, Thing, you know you'll feel better and those things all come from a really genuine place and we really want to help the person um, but it oftentimes makes the person with depression feel worse because yes they want to feel better they want to be able to get out and do things and look on the bright side but because depression is an illness it's preventing them from doing that so the types of things that we can say are I'm here for you I support you I know that you can get through this you know, let me know how I can be here for you, I believe in you, I love you, all these kinds of things. Those are really helpful, supportive things that we can say to a loved one who has depression. Just wanted to go over that one quickly. So let's get on to the new stuff now. So the next thing that we should avoid doing uh, when we have a loved one who has depression is making ultimatums. So that whole tough love thing of saying, if you don't get better, if you don't, you know, start dealing with this, if you don't um, stop being depressed, then I'm going to leave you. I'm going to end the relationship. I'm never going to talk to you again. And that kind of stuff makes the person with depression not only feel depressed, but oftentimes really trapped and helpless. Because if they could just get over it, they would. Now that said, as the loved one of someone who has depression, if being in the relationship with that person who has depression is getting to be too much for you, and you really feel like you can't be in the relationship anymore, then that's a decision that you need to make for yourself. But telling someone and threatening them and trying to like tough love them into changing, it just actually makes them feel worse and feel trapped because if they could just get over it again, they would. So try to avoid, you know, a strong arming our loved ones with stuff like that. I know that we sometimes get frustrated and don't know what else to do or what else to say, but saying something like that it's, it's not helpful and, and it's not going to be useful. Um, another thing that we need to be aware of, uh, loving someone with depression, is to keep on them. You know, they're struggling and they might push us away or they might turn down invitations, but it's not because they don't love us, it's because they're struggling. It's because they are feeling overwhelmed with the depression and so they feel like they need to pull away. Um, but we need to keep on them and, and calling them and telling them, when, them that we're there for them and just reminding them. It could be little things. It can just be like a little text message being like, hey, I'm thinking of you. Would love to see you whenever you're up for it. Or giving them a call and being like, hey, just wanted to check in. Um, you know, I'd love to get together, but no pressure whenever it works for you. And just sort of being there and keeping on them because that's one of the hugest things um, for people who have depression is knowing that their loved ones are there there for them and they still care about them and they still value them even though they have this big cloud, this big weight, this big monster of depression on top of them that they're having a hard time getting out from under. And that can be really therapeutic 
when, uh, you know, when, when any of us know that our loved ones are there for us and care about us, no matter what we're going through, that's huge for anyone, depressed or not, that is huge. So to keep that in mind, that even if, you know, um, the person doesn't take you up on all your offers, to know that your, your love and your support and your keeping on them um, actually does make a difference to them. It actually does mean something. The other thing that we all of us do whenever someone is talking about something that they're going through is it's normal to kind of say, oh yeah, I know what you mean. I went through something like this that's similar. That said, when someone is talking to us about their depression or about what they're going through and about how they're feeling, um, it's important that we often, you know, try to just listen. Try not to compare our experience to theirs. Not and at least not all the time. Having a bad day and having a moment of feeling depressed if you know you lost your job or someone broke up with you or you know things didn't go your way and so feeling down and feeling depressed because something happened in your life is different. It's still important, it's still a big deal, don't get me wrong, but it's different than having the mental illness of depression. So as, although we're trying to be helpful and say, I know what you mean, Unless we've had depression, we don't know what, what, what they mean. And that said too, even if we have had depression, everyone experiences a little bit differently and we can talk about our experiences with our loved ones, but sometimes they just need us to listen. They just need us to be there for them. They just need to feel heard and to feel valued for what they're going through. Um, not necessarily that they always, you know, need to hear about what we're going through. Not in every situation. And the other thing that's important to know about loving someone who has depression, that it's okay to ask. It's okay to ask them how they're feeling. It's okay to check in with them and be like, hey, you know, even saying something like on a scale from one to 10, one being you've never felt worse and 10 being you've never felt better, where are you at today? You know, with the depression or with your mood or with how you're doing, it's okay to check in and ask. A lot of times I think we get scared of, of it and we don't want to ask or we don't want to say the wrong thing so we just don't end up saying anything but it's okay and it oftentimes feels good for the person who does have depression to know that their loved ones care enough just to ask. So those are the next set of our, of our tips and, and, and stuff that we can do to, to help and support um, and love um, in the best ways possible uh, someone who has depression. And it's not easy. And every day, it, 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 it's not an easy thing. That's for sure. Um, but with some of these tips, with some of these strategies, once we start using them, uh, it will become easier. It won't become, uh, it won't feel quite as draining. So thanks you guys for watching 